I'm Russ Kickle, and on this episode of American Reef, we got some eye candy for you. So what do I mean by some eye candy? Well, it's been about a year, right, since we've seen Tim Plaza's beautiful kind of reef tank, right? And um, in, in Tim's own words, he said his tank, right, has never looked so good, right? So to me, that's saying something because we've seen this tank for, what, three-ish years? And I thought it looked great all three years. So to that point, when you see these videos, I think you'll you'll be impressed. Um, before we check out those videos, a couple announcements. Um, if you're looking for some additional product videos, um, Mad Hatter's Reef, Jeff over at Mad Hatter's Reef and Premium Aquatics have teamed up to start creating some additional product videos. And I find them very useful to the point, uh, very valuable. Um, so check them out. They're over on Premium Aquatics YouTube channel. Again, just go to YouTube, search for Premium Aquatics. Um, again, like for me, it's one of those things where I can never see the products or touch all the products that are available out there. And these videos kind of tend to, to get you close to the products and get you those details that you can't always uh, read about or actually see because, again, you just you don't have access to them. So, again, tons of value there like Premium Aquatics always does, right? And speaking of value, again, you have Bulk Reef Supply. They put out a list. Uh, it's called like the best of 2017. And normally I don't pay a lot of attention to their, the general lists, right? The best of. Um, but this particular list, the way the categories they had broken down, I found a lot of value in them. Um, you know, they had like Ryan's top pick, for example, which means something to me because I value his opinion. Um, but also they had various other kind of categories. One of them was the top safety product, for example. Uh, another one was the top technology product, which the Stream 3, which I would tend to agree, was their pick. You know, again, this was the maglev kind of device they had. Um, you know, the top filtration product. And either way, as a new hobbyist or an experienced hobbyist, I, I believe that it, it's a, a value and something worth checking out. So if you haven't, go to bulkreefsupply.com, check it out. Again, I think it's something that it's definitely uh, of value and, and worth checking out. And then lastly, if you're looking for American Reef's HPD or the HPD products, you know, the pellets and stuff like that, just head on over to AmericanReefHPD.com. All one word, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and there you'll see the pellets, the starter kits, you know, the shredded noris and the HPD, as well as the instructions on how to kind of mix all that stuff up. Um, again, I still get tons of emails on where can I purchase it. That's where. American Reef, HPD.com. Let's talk. Okay, so hold it. On your tank now, we've been doing these one every year. So it's been like three years, right? Yeah, this is the third year. The third year. And last time we talked, 
you had basically you had uh, some new fish new basically uh the bashy hardware right you were trying that you know all that new hardware how'd you make out well you know well it's been a year now and um the bashy um bio bio reactor still churning away and the colors are still super strong and dynamic and um 2017 has been an incredible year for the tank and it's been growing like crazy i've been making a ton of frags um and I am consuming about eight pounds of calcium reactor media every month and a half. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of media that I'm burning through. Um, some of these corals in here um, have just grown a lot. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been a good year. So eight pounds. Eight pounds, yeah. Yeah, I go to the store and get eight pounds. Actually, it's, it's more like ten pounds. Ten, I've got markers on the calcium reactor. When it hits a certain marker, um, I know that's 10 pounds of media that I have right. to stick in there. And now, okay, you you added a frag tank last time, too. So is, is that because that frag tank started taking off as well? No, no, that frag tank is more of a more of a holding tank. So uh, okay. uh, when I make frags for people or if I'm in the aquarium working and something a big branch of something breaks off or if I'm deciding to move things around, I'll just stick stuff in the frag tank either to hold for people um, or just like residual pieces from, from the, the display. Uh, but I'm actually not growing a whole lot in there and you know there's pieces in there that I just stuck in there I'm like ah, I just stick it in there and whatever and see how it goes. So that's not where any of the growth is from. It's all from, it's, it's from the beast here, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Yeah. It's so okay. So with ten pounds of, of <laughs> just media, right? Yeah. So does that truly translate to ten pounds coming out of it and ten pounds of growth as well? I'm I'm guessing so. I mean, the the way it's gonna the calcify, you know, it's, right. it's the corals are physically growing. You can see where they're growing, uh, and and um, I'm taking a lot of pieces. So. I'm guessing I'm in. Sure. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm not a chemist, but yeah. Right. It's got to go somewhere, right? Go oh, somewhere, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's media that's it's dissolving into the water column, and so it is getting absorbed into the corals, and the corals are using it for the skeleton, so uh, right. it's probably 10 pounds of growth, too. And now uh, where? Somewhere to it. Well, I was going to say, which corals are you seeing the most growth? Are you seeing any specific corals that are like really just blue? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Montes especially are taking off. Um, the the Satosa that I've got, the, uh, the golden Satosa and the regular orange Satosa are growing like crazy. This this Andada right behind me there is, I mean, it's about to hit the glass again, and I'm probably gonna have to take off a, a you know quarter pound chunk of it. Right. Uh, yeah. Staghorns are growing fast again. Um, yeah, it's it's just crazy. The chalices, I've got chalices uh, at the bottom of the tank there that are. Probably a good 20 inches in diameter now, yeah. so they're consuming it too. And I never frag them because they're at the bottom of the tank. I can't physically reach them to make frags unless I get crazy and they come up with some kind of tool to chop them. Um, right, exactly. And and now, have you added any additional flow, which would also account for that, or the flow still stayed the same? Well, it's pretty much still the same. I have. Um, a couple of those Jabo power guys, they're only basically good for a year to a year and a half, right. you know, because they're kind of cheap and they're disposable. Right. So uh, as old ones have died out, I've bought maybe three new ones over the last year. That's about it, though. I mean, no additional flow, no additional power heads. Um, I was thinking about trying one of the max spec dryers, but um, kind of bailed out of that. Right. It, I, just, I can't really make a whole lot of changes because everything's doing so great right now. Right. It's been great for for minimal minimal expenses right um another good thing in 2017 was that we had a lot of water this year in california so um i definitely stuck to better water changes and that might have something to do with it uh, additionally i slowed down on the the no pox dosing i was dosing um like 40 mils every day for just to keep the nitrates down and i kind of cut back on that because there was definitely a film like a biofilm that was building up on the, on the tank walls too quickly for me so i only do that monday wednesday and friday and, and then try to keep up on the water changes and that's keeping my nitrates right around 40. Um, 
I'd like to get them lower, theoretically. I'd like to get them a lot lower to, to 15. But uh, my fish load is crazy, and uh, <laughs> it's just too high. Right, know? right. But yeah, the colors look amazing. You'll see it. It's just, I don't, I don't know what is going on with the tank. But this 2017, I think the combination of um, adding that skimmer last year at the end of last right. year, and then the, the Bashi Bioreactor, um, it's just really, really settling in right now. It's an, uh, you got to make sure you find some wood and knock on it, right? Yeah. <laughs> just, exactly. just because, right? As soon as you, I don't know why, right? But as soon as like you talk and, and, and you jinx it, right? It always happens. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's funny you mentioned that, Russ, because I don't even like taking pictures and, and posting right. them so much. I'll put it on Facebook every right. once in a while because it's... it's not as big as say like one of the big boards like Reef Central. Right. I'm afraid of posting pictures because I'm afraid of jinxing my right. stuff. And right. Having to be, you crash on me or, or losing a coral that I had just taken a picture of because I was like so proud to grow it out. Right. And boom, it, it dies the next month. It's right. Like, so frustrating. Exactly. And you change nothing. You add yeah. nothing. Right. And it just changes. Yeah. It's just man. It's just humility. Right. It's just when you think you have it dialed in. Right. Um, me, for me, it's more about just enjoying the ride right now. I mean, right. It's, there's going to be peaks and valleys with these tanks. They're always dynamic. They're always changing. Biological levels are changing. Um, something is always changing. The fish are growing. Right. They're adding more waste to the system, etc. Right. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm on some kind of fine balanced edge right now where everything's doing really good <laughs> and it's just a short ride. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Well, hopefully it's not, right? We're, you know, again, yeah. don't look any gift no, horses okay. in the mouth, right? Exactly, exactly. And so, okay, the, as far as the media that you're adding, are you using any special media? What kind of special media are you using on the calcium well, reactor? I am using the stuff you just go down to your local fish store and buy. It's just crushed coral. Yeah. You just get the yep. big chunks if you can. Uh, it's like a dollar fifty a pound or something like right. that. So, right, I'm crushed coral. <laughs> Yeah, I just take that home. Uh, I try and get the bigger ones that you know that look like they're, they're chunks. Yeah. And I'll, I'll just take them home and um, rinse them off in tap water. Um, you know, so to get all the dust out. And sometimes there's like cigarette butts in there or, or pieces of driftwood or whatever where they're collected from. Um, get that out and, and then recharge that reactor. So right. In there. Right. And it's always good to clean the calcium reactor too. It's always a good time when you're topping it off. Um, I, I let it get get down to that 10 pound mark. And I know when it does that, that I've got, um, you know, it's going to take a couple hours to do that. I know. It's such a pain. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, doing that once every two months, it's, I'm fine with that. It's like, because um, to me, it's like that calcium reactor is like the heart. You know, it's like the heart of the system, that and the skimmer. Uh, you want them running optimally all the time. You don't want them clogging up um, or changing, um, you know, their, the drip rate or something like that. You right. really want that really consistent to keep your alcohol stable. Right, because again, how many horror stories of, again, your alkalinity is, again, spiking, going up, down, and again, here we go. Then things start crashing, and then, again, I, I can't tell you how many emails that I constantly get about, we were out on vacation, the next thing you know, the calc reactor got screwed up, and then the alkalinity either spiked or crashed, and then it was a cascading effect. Yeah, typically it's going to be a calcium reactor, something clogs up with it, uh, it starts to clog up, and um, uh, it drops the alkalinity. I mean, right. A, a two, 2 dKH drop in some of these tanks could be fatal uh, right. for a lot of tanks. Um, and some tanks aren't, you know, they can drop like 1 dKH or 2 dKH and not be affected. Other ones, uh, they're super, super sensitive to it, so I don't know if it has to do with the nutrients or what, but... I've been target 2017. I tried to target about a 10 dKH, um, but really, I mean, I've been holding it at nine, and I've got well, my bubble rate coming out. That reactor is almost like pure CO2. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a stream of CO2 coming out. But, and it's like, okay, that's probably hard now. I'm probably running it hard out there. Well, that's yeah. what that's what's kind of fun to like with those Destaco CO2 reactors when you just see like that rate of you know again of bubbles and and the way it kind of operates. It's kind of wild when you see it. Um, and again, they they've got to figure it figured out. Um, yeah. But it, yeah, it, that's a great looking, that's a great looking unit. Um, I ran in Sanjay at um, uh, Reef of Palooza down in Southern California this year, and he, he had talked about that that reactor. 
had his thoughts on right. He had some good things to say about it. Right. Yeah, and and again, to your point, it, just to look at it, you're just kind of like, it's almost like a sci-fi, right? <laughs> Whatever you want to call it, like it should, it should be on a spaceship somewhere, and you know, it's controlling something, right? Something from the future. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. I always figure it, it's plugged into something that there's a body, right, cryogenically being stored, right? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, um, you know, I've been running that Dashi reactor. I haven't had to do anything with that. Mm -hmm. um, the protein skimmer, the Aquamax Monster protein skimmer, um, I did have to clean the pumps out once, which I guess is normal over a period of a year there. Yeah, I would um, think, right? But other than that, this, the thing is just plugging along. Oh, one thing I did change, I, I tried something different, and it seems to be working okay. Um, I used to have uh, the ROX carbon, the BRS ROX carbon. Yep, yep. Uh, I would put that in a little filter bag and put that in my one of the chambers in the sump. <clears throat> and I noticed over time I was just like basically changing the carbon and the GFO at the same time. Right. So I just combined them both into the same reactor. And so I changed the carbon, I changed two cups of that ROX carbon and I think three cups of GFO at the same time, once every I think, six weeks, six okay. to seven weeks. Um, Mm -hmm. so one less bag floating around. Um, sure. And it, it, I can't remember the reactor. Is it just got a fluidized kind of reactor coming through there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Nothing special. Old school. Uh, I think it's a vertex. Yep. Uh, vertex reactor being fed by a pump. Got it. High pump. Okay. And and then as far as um, the actual tank itself, remember you had I think you at the time you added three of the were they like rope fish pipe fish? Oh yeah, the pipe fish. Yes. Yep, the banded pipe fish. Oh, those are beautiful. I enjoyed those for about a month. About a month, month. One of them made it longer. One of them made it a month and a half, and uh, <laughs> it just couldn't make it. But then um, I tried. I got these. Um, these dragon pipe fish, mm -hmm. uh, very similar uh, to the seahorses, and uh, so they, they're more, they kind of stay down low and they kind of crawl around, and I've got a couple of them in there now that I've had for a couple months now, and uh, those seem to be doing a lot better, and uh, as I talked to the guys at the store, they said, yeah, the ones with the yellow and the black or the brown bands with a little red tail, those are really hard to keep, uh, so. Got it. So I kind of low, gave them a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what these new ones? What kind are they called? Uh, they're just called, um, I think, dragon pipe fish. Okay. Uh, I don't know the scientific name of them. Yeah, they seem to be doing better, and uh, they kind of scoot around. Uh, I had one by himself for the longest time, and I was like, okay, well, if I can sustain one for you know three months, then I'm gonna get another one. And so he lived, and I had another one. So now it's kind of cool when they found each other. Right. It's, like, it's kind of neat to see this. <laughs> right, 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 right. And now, what do they eat? I don't know what they eat, man. Their mouths are so freaking tiny. <laughs> right. I mean, it's a tiny little um, snout. I have no right. idea what they could eat, but they go all over the tank and they like eyeball stuff right. and they pick things and it's stuff I can't physically see, right. visually see. Right. Plus, yeah. I'm getting older. I need glasses and I, it's, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't help that I can't see them. You and me both. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, um, the fish are still the same. I haven't added a whole lot of fish. No. I don't think I've added any fish except those little pipe fish. Um, still got the wrasses in there, the uh, the flame wrasses, uh, flame angels that are spawning every night. Um, my antheas are all the same. I've got the super male with uh, five girls in there that spawn every night. And all the tangs are still the same tang. Yes. Another year of those guys. I love Just them. Getting and, and you haven't lost any, right? No. No, thank goodness. Good. Good deal there. And then as far as, okay, you said on the flow side of it, you just basically replaced any JBOs that went bad or anything like that, right? Yeah. And then as far as kind of like the, the bottom of the tank, you didn't mess around with anything down there, right? As far as, you know, sand coming, going, or... No, no sand bit at all. Okay. Um, it's on a bare bottom tank. Yep. Uh, the, uh, the problem I'm having now is I've got some, um, like, these encrusting monies that I've had at the yes. bottom of the tank. And like I said earlier, these monies are taking off, and they're kind of physically killing things. or They're, they're killing chalices, and they're actually... <laughs> 
they're actually coming up on the side of the tank now, on the wall, and my plastic scraper is not strong enough to knock them off. So I've got to come up with a way to um, scrape these Montes off my acrylic without jacking my acrylic up, because they are coming up fast. And they're really colorful. They're like these rainbow Montes that everyone wants. And to me, it's like a pest. It's like, man, this thing is growing so fast. <laughs> it's, it's a nuisance. <laughs> Right, and what do you do? Because, I mean, think about it. Like, I know a lot of people will put, like, Zoes down there, right? But Zoes won't compete with the Montes. Montes will beat the yeah. Zoes, right? I've put, I've tried to kill these guys by putting um, acros down there. Right. Like, frags and stuff of extra pieces that I have. I'll put them down there hoping that they will kill it back. And that Monty just takes them over and kills them. Right. I've tried... Um, just golden uh, pavona right. put that down there I'm like okay you're strong man take this money out or slow it down <laughs> and it's like encrusted over it right. I tried a scully that I've had for a long time I was hoping the scully because it's like a soft tissue um, LPS right. thinking okay it's got stingers maybe it's going to sweep out and kill it nope right. <laughs> this right. thing Monty that I've had for a while is just man nothing stops it right <laughs> so, Okay, uh, so one one trick that um, that one of the viewers actually taught me that actually worked on star polyps, but I believe that it also worked on Monty's, was um, the Red Sea product for uh, uh, Aptasia, the Aptasia X. Aptasia X, okay, I've heard of that. Basically, you just take it, and, and I think it's a version of Kalkwasser. Not 100% sure, but I... To me, that's what it, it seems like a version of that, where you just basically run a line along it, right? And what it'll do is it will kill the tissue where you put the line, right? Yeah. And it's right. It's so you'll. A good idea. Yeah, and just try that. Obviously, take a little piece and you know, <laughs> take a little piece and test it out first. But that's um, that's what he used to do to basically take any of his control or basically to control any of his wilder corals. So he had a beautiful set of uh, star polyps, right, that were the neon beautiful green that for what for originally they never kind of encrusted anywhere. And then for whatever reason, they went haywire. Yeah. And, and then what he did, he just started keeping a perimeter of it once every two months, he, he'd put it back and they would just kill enough to keep it back and it, it saved it from going crazy. And then I ended up using it on a pair of, of or some star pops that I had and it worked fine. And then I actually used it on, um, what did I have it on? It was, uh, it was um, some A-cans that it worked fine on. Uh, and also on, it was uh, some Digitata that it worked fine on. And it didn't wipe anything out. It only wiped on, it ki only killed what it touched, right? So. Okay. You know, I don't know if try it can't hurt. You know, yeah, just yeah, take a little I, test piece. Point. It's just um, these monies are at the, the weird angle of the tank. It's really hard to get to them, but I am. I'll figure something out. I, I just been lazy and not doing anything. Um, Julian Sprung's that uh, the feeder stick thing. Yeah. So you take the the Aptasia uh, X hey. and you suck it up, and it gives you. You know, that's... <laughs> <In a court. laughs> right. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, it gives you enough length to, you know, take as much as you need, you know, or as little, but it gives you that length that you can kind of, yeah. again... So I'm guessing all you're going to have to do is just turn off all, all the flow in the tank. So yep. everything's stagnant and just kind of, like, go down there and chemically kill the water. It's a, this e exactly. You just put it on there and you let it set for, like... 30 minutes to 45 minutes, pop the power on, and then, you know, you, you get pretty much instant results, meaning that, you, you know, within an hour, you see it, it dies away. All right. Yeah. Yeah, this stuff is invasive. Um, it's really pretty. Don't get me wrong. It's, yeah. It's, I, don't hate it. I don't hate it, but I just, I hate that I've gotten um, um, just negligent about yeah. taking care of it. So yes. Now I'm paying the price. This is one of those things. If you don't stay on top of your tank, uh, things will get out of control. So. I have the same thing on uh, the one tank that I've got. I've got that. Again, it's a purple money that it throws up. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
and encrusting stuff. Yes, yeah. And at or, first, or, or is it a cap? Is it a cap cornice? Yeah. Or is it more? No, no, yeah, yeah, it's the cap. And at first, you know, I blew current underneath it so it would come up, right, and start encrusting it. And my goal was to have shelves on yeah. basically growing up the side of the tank. And I thought, yeah, hey, that'd be really cool. And sure, it was cool until it started going around the corner, right? And then when I stopped, again, using the blade and, and you know, within probably one month's time frame, it, it encrusted so much that when I would go up, it would start racking off big chunks off it, and then it kind of threw off the nice looking pieces that I didn't want it to break off. And then, uh, you know, then you're like, man, I don't want to ruin the whole, you know, the whole colony. And then sometimes you like bite the bullet and you just destroy this beautiful colony, right? Yeah. And you're like, oh man, and the tank looks like yeah. crud for a little bit. What am I done? Right, exactly. And you know, and then for me, there's enough guys locally that I'm like, hey guys, you want some of this stuff? And they're like, oh sure, right? You give it to them, and at least you you know you feel good. At least you're helping other guys out, right? But then you look at your tank for about a month and a half, and you're like, oh man. It looks mangled. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, it looks mangled. I I, I get that feeling. Um, I've got some guys that come over and and they want bigger frags for some reason. It's like, you know, they've got they're setting up bigger tanks, so they want like you know frags in the three to five inch range. Right. And um, so I, I figure, okay, I can do that. But um, you know, my tank's gonna be look it'll look mangled for a little bit, but. I'm telling you, there's something going on where if I frag something, um, I mean, even a thick Oregon tort, I mean, I've got like one of the bluest, biggest Oregon torts around here, and um, I can take a two inch frag from that thing, and that cut point where I frag it from, within like a week, it is like covered back up. Right. It, it heals, right. this tank is like healing really, really, really fast right now, and um, I don't get why. I, I think it's just a bacterial thing. It's coming up on that. I think six years now. I have to look at my record six or seven years now. Probably six. Right. Yeah, maybe the bacteria is like at that level where it's totally balanced out. Maybe it's that bashy bioreactor that's helping with the bacteria also. Um, I don't know. I, yeah, right. I don't know. Yeah, don't, don't argue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't argue. I'm not going to mess around and try, you know, all these other additives and things like that because it's. It's doing really good. Right, exactly. And, and the thing is, a lot of the frags that I sell, I go to the Bay Area, um, like San Jose area, a few times or, or, um, during the year. And uh, I bring frags down there because I post on one of the crews. Right. And everybody says the corals that they get from me are doing really, really well. So it's like, okay, it's, these are all basically tank rays. They're used to my conditions and my negligence and right. my screw ups. So <laughs> everything's doing really good, and their colors are they're getting even better colors. Um, out of them because they're using better in higher end lighting. Right, so. right. Okay, well, hold on. So to that point, if somebody's interested in some of your frags, tell them how to get a hold of you. Uh, they can just email me at, at tryforfun33 at gmail.com um, or just find me out on Facebook or message me on Reef Central. That's basically the big three places that I you know, kind of make my connections with folks. And then, okay, so on Facebook, how are they gonna hunt you down on Facebook? Uh, I'm just Tim, Tim Plaza out there. There you go. And then, yeah, on Reef Central, I'm TFP. That's been my user handle out there, uh, TFP on Reef Central. So, that almost sounds like a James Bond, TFP. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is TFP. Yeah, that's been my, my handle forever. Um, and I can't believe my account has been out there since 2002. It's, it's mm. kind of scary to look back and, and see how far the hobby has evolved and how far it's come. And uh, the technology, the tech, the tech, and the success rates that we're having now with these corals is right. really neat. Right. Well, at, the, at the same time, I always say, you know what? If it was easy, if it was a simple hobby to be in, everybody would have tanks that are filled up with corals that are, you know, you know, foot long in diameter or whatever, you know, and, and spawning. I mean, it doesn't happen. It's just right. it's, you don't see it too often because right. it's a difficult hobby. There's always something that can go wrong. Right. Uh, all right. Speaking of which, how about those videos that Bulk Reef is putting out? Like the, B, the uh, what is it, Bulk Reef in Investigates or BRS Investigates? Have you been watching those? I catch those every once in a while, yeah. Man, do I love them things. I mean, yeah. 
they take every aspect, right? And rather than kind of do the guesswork and all that stuff, right? Especially on the high tech kind of stuff that, you know, m mere mortals with like normal budgets <laughs> don't have like the, you know, the resources to kind of test, right? And, and you know, and, and to your point about, again, that high tech, right? And how things have changed, right? And they'll take and prove and disprove and stuff like that. I just love that stuff. Yeah, it's it's amazing the the technology that's out there and the techniques now. Um, you know, for some reason Europe, I've always thought Europe has always been ahead of us right. as far as the hobby right. goes, and they, you always see the newer, um, more innovative products that come out of Europe. For some reason, uh, they're just more resourceful, or they put a lot more research into it, or what? I don't know what it is, but right. uh, I've always been impressed with uh, the European tanks. And, right. You see big tanks and you see big corals in them too, so it's like, dang, that is whatever you guys are doing is working. <laughs> right. And uh, they really push the envelope with a lot of the things. It's really neat to see that. Well, and it's funny because I know um, spending a lot of time with um, Mike Paletta, right? He'll, mm -hmm. You know, those guys will spend a lot of time over there, and one of the things that you constantly hear back is the patience, right? And, and to your point. The patience which leads to these bacteria cultures of, you know, like, you'll hear the whole cycling of, of systems for like a year or two years, you know, yeah. before, you know, they, they start doing things, right? Um, yeah. Which is really interesting. Um, and it, which is actually kind of a little bit different than like the, like the, the Bulk Reef guys. Right, like some of the things that they're doing, you see how, like what they're, the latest thing that they're testing is, don't worry about water changes. Right, yeah. they're saying, hey, forget water changes, right? W yeah. With the technology being so, again, efficient, that, you know, and, and, is, and the, we'll say the, the way that, that you can use Triton to test, and, right. and with, again, all of the efficient kind of hardware to strip things out anyway and to add things in, why not try not doing it, right? Because if you can measure it, then you know what to add, what not to add, and so you can be exact. And like everything else, they're early in their testing, but I'm like, holy cow, like that's totally different than yeah. you've taught or been taught, right? Right, all the years, right. We've been grown up or, or raised to think a certain way right right and so and right. then pushing the envelope there is, is incredible right um i mean elements are one thing but I, honestly i think a lot of those tanks that you see the triton method being used on they don't have a heavy fish lift though right. i've never seen a triton tank that's chock full of fish right so um i think as far as like a coral perspective with stony corals and elements and trace elements and, and etc things like that i think it's possible to pull that off without water changes uh, long term, but I think if you have a lot of fish, I don't know how you get rid of ammonia. Right. <laughs> fish excrete. I mean, these fish, I, I feed them your stuff all the time, and right. man, they poop. And you know, there's a lot of waste that breaks down. Um, that's happening. It's like, well, there's no elements involved in that. That's like ammonia, and nitrite, and the nitrate. So right. Um, water right. changes and Cato, I guess, will pull that out. And, right. Uh, we'll okay. that. Well, and it's funny because to your point, how opposite is that compared to kind of the European ways, right? Right. Yeah. As far as again the the um, you know the the refugiums, these massive kind of systems that are you know like when you see some of the the refugiums that are out there that are like I don't want to say as big as my living room, yeah. but you know huge systems to do nutrient export, right? and to do water changes right and to do you know a lot of that and to your point like um when mike mike we put a video out probably i don't know a month ago or something like that he, he had that one elos tank he gave up on the triton system because he couldn't get his acros to to basically basically thrive in any way shape or form and then when he would talk to you know the his we'll call it counterparts over you know in germany etc they all had the same kind of um we'll say experiences and and they they basically put it back to starting it off to with live rock they were like 
with sterile rock, they couldn't start their systems. And it, it, they were just like, listen, other people have, they couldn't, you know. So they just kind of threw their hands up in the air and they just replaced the, the sterile rock with tons of live rock, had tons of sponges, lots of bacterial matured rock, right? And, uh, and drop Triton, just pull Triton straight out of the mix, right? And yeah, it's a, your mileage may vary. I mean, it does sound good in a way, but I, I think it will only work in certain situations. I, I just, right. I don't know. <laughs> right. Or if you're going to go dead rock route, like like when I set up this guy here, um, it was all dead rock from uh, Marco Rocks uh, right. or VRS, right. you know, just dead rock. Right. And so, you know, it probably did take a total of um, a year before I can grow SPS. I mean, I've mentioned that before, at least a year before I can grow SPS. And then, um, so now it's probably hitting that stride, you know, four or five years in, right. where everything's coated right. and uh, the live, the dead rock is basically live now, coated with bacteria. Right. And there, I've got crazy right. sponges in there too. There's like yellow and black sponge that's um, all over the tank. It's like man, the right. dark areas. So it just takes that time to, to yeah. develop it, right? Yeah. And and maybe for all I know, maybe that sponge is actually helping um, with the fish waste too. I don't know a whole lot about sponge, so I, I'm not, I know it does like some filtration of the water. So maybe it's helping uh, with the nitrates in the fish. I don't know. Anybody? Yeah. Again, if talking talking with Mike and those guys, they truly believe that it that's an indicator, right? That things are right, right? Again, it's oh, balance. Yeah. Right. Kind of right. Balance. Exactly. When you when you see rock that has that sponge growth that the sponges are growing it's kind of like the that's a sign of saying okay whether it's the bacteria wise or um just in general with that kind of balance right yeah. things are right not now things are at least okay to start growing again acropora yeah yeah i, I agree um the sponge does something i'm not sure what it does but it's doing something in there yeah, but fish don't. It's it weird. I, I thought the tanks might kind of pick at it or whatever, but no, they don't mess with it. Right. Uh, I got little angels in there. They don't seem to mess with it either. Um, I'm sure if I threw an emperor angel fish in there, he would decimate it though. <laughs> but eat all my zoos too. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> okay. So you, 2017's been the banner year for the tank, right? yeah. you, and you haven't changed any lights, right? You or anything like that. Um, yeah, I'm doing this change my VHOs out. <laughs> right. <laughs> old, you get some new VHO bulbs. Um, and uh, that's it. I'm still running those cheap uh, Ocean Revives. Uh, mm -hmm. I did increase the uh, intensity on them. I finally got them up to, uh, I think I'm running them at 100% blue um, versus like 85. I kind of ramp them up a little bit. And I figured, you know, they're probably losing some intensity and some of the spectral a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just running at 100 percent now, a little bit longer. Sure. That might be helping too, but I only just started doing that maybe, maybe two months ago. So that wouldn't explain how everything else has been so well. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, I don't know what happened. 2017 has been a blessing of a year for me here <laughs> with the aquarium. I think it could be also is that um, I, I didn't really do a whole lot with it. I wasn't in there a whole lot. I didn't have my hands in the tank. Right. <laughs> so, um, I just kind of enjoyed it. See, I, I am a huge believer of keeping your hands out of that tank. I, I, I just, you know, I, to me, your hands touch things, right? And I don't care how good you think they're clean, the soap and stuff like that. There, it just transfers things into that water and futzing with it and moving corals and and whatever that is. I just. I, yeah. I just really believe that the the more you can keep your hands out of that water is a good thing. I yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I get in there. I don't I don't mind making the frags for folks because it you know it helps pay the uh, pay some bills for the tank and all. But, right. Um, and when I'm up on that ladder working and my hands are in the tank so much, it's like I just don't really like doing it, but I'll right. do it just to you know to make the money to help out with the tank. Sure. Tanks, so. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. I just don't like working in it a whole lot. And now everything's getting so freaking big. It's like every time you stick your hand in there, something breaks. <laughs> and then you're stuck with branches and stuff. 
It's crazy. Uh, my fish are breaking off rads. It's weird. Um, these these tangs that I have, this uh, um, Machiliceps tang and the Phalari, they're they're about ten inches now, and uh, they will snap off branches. They, they're thick fish, and when they're hungry, if there's a piece of that food that I get from you drops down into the reef, those guys will just dart down there and try and get it, and they'll you'll hear a snap, and then you'll have a branch of something. I mean, right. it's that's the weirdest thing. These guys will pop off corals. And they'll have a big scratch on their body, but then it'll it'll heal up in a week or so. Right, right. What, so you're not using any of those little feeder bags? What's that? For for the HPD, you're not using any of the feeder bags with a clip? No, no. All I do is I get your stuff. I, I mix it up uh -huh. and then I freeze it and then I cut it in like one inch by one inch or one inch yeah, yeah. squares, and it's probably about half inch thick too. Okay. So I, yeah, I yeah. Up and make it really thick. And then I stick it in there with um, my tweezers there, uh, my tongs. Okay, so yes. next time I'll send you uh, some clips in the bags. It, it you, that way there, what? Because if not, to your point, it it'll get stuck down in there, and the fish, you know, it'll. To your point, if you you have that one inch or whatever cube. <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah, the fish, man, they'll break things, you know, yeah, or it's, it's a it's nightmare. Like shark, sharks on a reef at night, man, going after fish buried in there. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I've got these, again, they're just little feeding bag kind of things. You just, you drop it in there, and, and then that way there, they'll pick at it all day, so to speak, and it'll prevent the breaking of and all that sort oh. of stuff. So, yeah. yeah it's really interesting to see how that works out with these tangs, man. These guys are big. And uh, these tangs actually have, they have teeth. <laughs> you should see this, this uh, Valorai, man, when he is eating that food, it's like Jaws, a second set of teeth, a second row of teeth come out to get the food. It's, it's hilarious. Do they them, really? Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, they're really fine teeth. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess but that's what they use for straight algae on the reef. That's wild because I I know like for most of the tangs that you know that I feed there I never see any teeth whatsoever right um, yeah it's a fine road I didn't even notice my wife I was out of town she was taking care of the tank and uh, she said hey your tangs have teeth and I'm like what are you talking about she goes yeah they when they when you feed them next time you feed them watch them and you'll see this row of teeth come out and they're eating and it's like true I was like wow the big guys do the right follow up guys and the kilosips. That's wild. It's pretty wild, yeah. <laughs> it's cool. See, the, uh, it's, that's one of the reasons I kind of like that food so much, right? Because it's so palatable, right? It allows them to take that chunk and they eat, you know, and yeah. it gets in their bellies. Yeah. 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 That's the, I, I, honestly, I, that is probably the best food. I mean, benefit and cost benefit wise, too. Yeah, it, yeah. It can last a long time. Yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. And, the bag, the reason why that bag, you'll, you'll see, it's even, it'll help the food that much more because that bag, all the, all the aggressive fish will hit, you know, that first five minutes and then they'll start going away and then you'll see the non-aggressives, they'll come back and then they'll, it'll give them a chance to do the exact same thing, it, which for whatever reason, when you don't have that bag, it doesn't work that way, and I don't know why, yeah. you know. Yeah, the, well, the tumbling of that big chunk of food. Right. And the big guys just get in there and tear it up. And right. It's, it's cake. Right. It's kind of cool to watch, but I'm like, oh, this yeah. is, it's, it's kind of chaos, but it seems like everybody eats, so everybody right. gets something. Right. Um, yeah, then my Achilles back here, you can see him right there. He's, yeah. He's, uh, I think he's officially like nine or ten years old now. Um, hasn't, hasn't grown at all. I mean, he's still the same size. Um, yeah, he hasn't grown at all. All the other fish have dwarfed him, but yeah, he's he's pretty old now. I, I just hope that he can keep it going. He's he still looks really healthy. He's healthy. gonna say he looks beautiful still. Yeah. See, that's still my favorite fish. Yeah, and they're hard to keep uh, for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, a lot of people have a hard time keeping them. So my advice has been basically they need a lot of flow. Um, they really, really love the flow for some reason. I guess they come from uh, areas of the reef crest um, in Hawaii where the, the, the waves are just basically pounding them. So a lot of oxygen in there. Um, and I think they need to be just eating a lot too. Yeah. Just a lot of energy, um, a lot of food and energy. Right. And then again, again stress-free environment where no one's picking on them all the time. Um, I have noticed, I, I can say this, that when my nitrates, nitrates get above like 60, the fish didn't do so well. 
So um, I noticed that as I got my nitrates down to like a manageable 40, mm -hmm. um, the fish seemed to be doing better. Um, not so, getting so many spots or anything, or, or it just seemed to be a lot better. Yeah, what did you notice when you say they didn't, you know, do well? What, what, what did well, you... well, when...